So let's take a tour of the admin interface. Much like the user interface that we saw earlier, everything is done through a web interface, and you're taking a look at it here. What we're looking at here is how everything is in fact set up. So the first thing we want to look at is the scope. These are the users that are set up to, to use it. In this case, you can see that I have an AD group called TV users, and they're the ones who are set to use this particular management policy. In Password Manager, you can have multiple management policies for different users. So if you wanted to have one policy for, say, administrative accounts, another policy for maybe your C-level accounts, and a third for just your regular users, you can do that or some combination of thereof. You can have multiple Active Directory domains. We also support ADLDS as well. So any of those kind of scenarios, and for the most part, you can kind of mix and match that as you like. Here we'll take a look at the actual policy that's assigned to this particular management policy. You might recognize these from earlier. These are actually the questions that we were asked. And what you'll see here is that we have mandatory questions, optional questions, and then a help desk question. And the help desk question will become more obvious as we go through the help desk interface a little bit later. We can edit the questions. We can also translate them into multiple languages. And then here we have the settings for the Q&A profiles. Uh, for example, how many optional questions they need to answer, what the minimum length of the user-defined questions and what the length of the answers are, whether or not we, we um, hide the answers by default when they're typing them in, all that kind of stuff is right here. We can also reject the same questions for different questions, and we can reject answers that contain the corresponding questions. This is a tricky one. Some people will try to answer the question with the same question. So you can check that, and that will uh, force them to not be able to do that. Next, you'll see that the, the actual self-service workflows. If you recall earlier, when we logged in as a user, we had a set of items that were shown to us. These are those items. Each one is actually called a workflow. What I can do here is I can open up a workflow. And let's open up the Forget My Password workflow. We've seen that before. And what's going to happen here is on the right, it's showing me the actual workflow as it's configured. And on the left, it's showing me everything I can do with that workflow. So here, the first, what I have open now are the different authentication mechanisms I can use. Uh, authenticate with password, anything I want. Authenticate with Defender, that's our two-factor product. We have the optional ability to authenticate via phone and also authenticate via passcode. Um, we have a whole list of actions as well. So we can unlock the account, enable an account, disable an account, reset the password, all the things you'd think about and probably some you haven't even thought about, like issuing the BitLocker recovery key. We can do that as well. And lastly, we have notifications. We can notify you know, the administrator or the user or whatever we want, depending on what, what actually happens. And if we want to just add those, we just drag them in here, add them, and that's it. Each one has its own settings, so you can kind of see, for example, here it's going to show me what that email would look like. And I can fully customize that email as it comes up here in just one second. Um, in this particular case, there's nothing in it. We also have the ability to do uh, variables and whatnot, and those are listed, so you can uh, send this out with different variables from the, the actual action itself in the email. As you can obviously see, it's pretty powerful. So we, we've set a bunch of default ones that you saw a minute ago, but what we didn't do is we, we've made it so you can edit those and do whatever you want and do it any way that you want that makes sense to you. We also have the ability to do what we call a custom activity. And what the custom activity is, is that gives us the ability to go in and do whatever we want. Let's say you wanted to grab some data from an HR database, or you wanted to change, uh, do something else that's different. You could write a PowerShell script or a VB script or something and stick it in the custom activity, and that would allow you to do that. So pretty much it makes Password Manager power as powerful as you want it to be. So if there's something you want to do that we don't do, that's not a problem. Password Manager will take care of it for you. You just create the custom activity. And that can be done by you. There's an SDK, and it explains how to write that, how to write those scripts. Or also, our services or our partners can do that as well. While we're over here in the in the home area, I want to show you guys the uh, the emails as well. So what happens here is here we set up the email that can go out when a user is, is set up and enabled in Password Manager. We can remind users who haven't created or updated their profile to do that. And we can also remind users to change their password. And again, like I mentioned before, all these are fully customizable. Let's just click into one so you can see. 
that this is the default, but you can customize these however you like. You can see here that when the user is, is not registered, we go ahead and we send them something through the secure password extension. That was that pop-up that we saw when we uh, ran the Q&A profile settings the first time. Here after one day, we do both, and after 15 days, we do even more. The, the trick here is, is how often during those it will, it will uh, do something to the user. So the idea is that for the first 15 days, we may bug them a little bit, but after 15 days, we really start kind of getting in their face until they actually do it.